Hi, and welcome to this month's editorial video. November's editorial has taken some time to put together. The infographic we released, which really is the focus piece of the, of the editorial this month, has been a very exciting project to work on. Together with our partners, Hotel School La Hague, and founding member Shiji, we wanted to plot a timeline, the evolution of technology from industrial revolution period right up to today. But not only plot it out, we wanted to see how, if at all, major crises that occurred over this time had any influence on the innovation of technology. It is a massive piece with so much information that we decided to make it available for everybody this month free of charge. It's a constant work in progress and it will be updated frequently. I hope when you really look into this infographic, you'll notice that as technology became more accessible and advanced, certain companies seem to be born from crisis. Airbnb, for example, and even Uber, creating not the first shared economies in our industry, but certainly the most dominant. These days when we want to travel, we typically go to Google to search locations and prices before booking everything within just a few clicks. Even so, let's consider how technology has changed the way humans travelled before the influential changes of the mid-1990s. Let's start by highlighting some elements of the history of travel dating back to the 1800s and progress up to today. By the way, what I'm about to go through now really is the tip of the iceberg with this infographic, so make sure to spend the time to really go through every detail once you get your hands on it. The Industrial Revolution expanded rail connections across Europe and the world, which allowed for the beginning of mass transportation. In 1841, Thomas Cook had organised a trip for a large group of people, which resulted in the railways that he used giving him a commission for that trip. Therefore, he became a travel agent of the early days. And whilst this doesn't have anything directly to do with travel technology, it really could be the foundation for the development of the industry and its technology. As travelling started to become more accessible, hotels also started to be able to offer new features. Electricity, indoor plumbing, showers, passenger lifts and even in-room telephones started to become prevalent and almost the norm. So in 1903, the Wright brothers figured out how to fly, and boy, didn't that change everything. Henry Ford replaces horses with cars, his Model T Ford was released in 1908, and has since changed the course of human commuting. Boeing was then founded in 1916, and interestingly enough, this was through the period of the First World War. First hotel room radios were installed at the Hotel Statler in Boston in 1927. 1928, Pan Am started their first international flights down to South and Central America. World War II was the next major crisis to occur, and of course this was followed by the Cold War for many years to come. However, during this time, things really started to ramp up quite quickly. In 1946, the first guest credit cards were being implemented at Western Hotels, as well as Avis Airport car rental services also in 1947, the Roosevelt Hotel in New York City introduced TVs into some guest rooms. And eight years later, the Adolphus Hotel in Dallas was the first hotel to offer central air conditioning. Bear in mind now, this is all during post-war times. So everything was absolutely exploding when it came to any type of technology. In 1958, Sabre was founded as the first online reservation system by American Airlines. Around the same time, the first automated electronic reservation system for hospitality was introduced by Sheraton. Then in 1963, hotels saw the introduction of the first minibar when the Madison Hotel in Washington, D.C. offered in-room minibars. 1972, High Tech was founded at a time when hotels were really looking into the first versions of PMS systems electronic cash regis registers and point of sale systems. 1973, the Sheraton Anaheim was the first hotel to offer in-room movies. And didn't that change revenue opportunities for hotels in the 70s and 80s and 90s? 1974, Vincard invents the first recordable key card for hotel door locks. And then of course, 1975, Microsoft was founded by these guys. In 1984, Apple releases the first Macintosh computer, 
with it a very sophisticated marketing campaign and something that Apple would be recognized with for the next 30, 40 years. 1986 saw the release of telephones that were designed specifically for the use in hotel rooms, thanks to Teledex. Amadeus was founded in 1987 as a neutral GDS by Air France, Iberia, Lufthansa and SAS. Tonight, the information superhighway and one of its main thoroughfares, an online network called Internet. Okay, it's 1990 and the world has been introduced to the World Wide Web. And this is where things really do start to speed up. In 1991, Hedna was founded. During the early 1990s, many airlines, travel agencies and hotel brands began developing websites that had online booking capabilities. In 1996, Expedia started offering reservations online for flights, hotels and car rentals. All the while, everything to do with consumer technology was absolutely exploding. TripAdvisor launched its website in 1999 and travel reviews all of a sudden started to matter. However, in 2001, 9-11 put a stop to the travel industry and impacted the economy for a period of time. Yet all of a sudden, tech companies were springing up everywhere for the next few years thereafter. In 2002, though, things were getting a little crazy in hotel tech, so HTNG was founded by Doug Rice to develop some form of technology standards for the hotel industry. HTNG's objective was to promote interoperability of the many technology systems used in the hotel industry. Those such as PMS, point of sale, telephone systems, building automation systems, guest room entertainment systems such as video on demand, security and access control systems, and many others. You have to consider at that time, hotels sometimes had up to 50 different systems that were not connected or talking to each other. Side note, HTNG estimated in 2005 that $25 billion was being spent annually and worldwide by hotel companies in IT solutions. In 2003, hotel Wi-Fi became available and started to expand around the world. 2007, the iPhone was released. Boy, didn't that make an impact. Well, the next big shift was coming. As more smartphones that could access the internet were released, the more online e-commerce started to take a hold. All of a sudden, websites had to become mobile friendly. And in 2008, Choice Hotels were the first to introduce a mobile hotel app. The financial crisis of 2008 saw companies like Airbnb and Uber emerge. The next frontier of how consumers traveled was upon us. In 2010, iPads were introduced into the guest rooms at the Plaza Hotel in New York City. And during the 20 teens, money was there to be had. Our industry saw quite a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Numerous startups emerged, some failed, some backed by VC firms, all with technology firmly focusing on mobile solutions, interoperability and scalability. Then in March of 2020, the world and the economy started to close down because of COVID-19. I don't think any of us really expected it to have such a strong impact as it has had, but we certainly very quickly realized we needed to make some changes and we needed to adjust. Where technology innovation takes us during this crisis is yet to be seen. But one thing is for sure, there will be innovation and technology that will come out of this crisis. Exactly what it will be and how it will be used, we are yet to see. No matter how you look at it, over the years, global crises and technology have impacted the travel and hotel industries. Some of it good, some not so good. As with all things technology-based, the fundamental principle of tech is to make life easier. At the core of everything, and especially now more than ever, it is important for our industry to keep up with all the latest technologies associated with travel and tourism. We need to make sure that we embrace it and ensure it is used in the most effective and possible way. I for one am very excited about the future, and whilst we have been challenged greatly as an industry, we will continue to survive, and most importantly, we will evolve. This is our last editorial piece for 2020. Next month we will be releasing our annual yearbook 
with a 2020 wrap up. So keep an eye out for that. 2021 is just around the corner. And whilst I'm sure it will also present many challenges, I do believe we will start to see things improve one way or another. And as always, thanks for watching and thank you for your support, for your subscriptions, for your membership and general support. We greatly appreciate it. Until next time, it's bye for now.